I want to 3D scan anything and everything and then 3D print it. I need 3D scanning to be easy to understand, easy to do, and easy to use. The name of the 3D scanner that's claiming to actually do it all. After trying out apps and handhelds, I kind of consider myself a skeptic on 3D scanning. So when I was contacted back before Christmas about a 3D scanner by a company I'd never heard of, well, my skeptic alarm started going off. Turns out it was Matter and Form, a Canadian company that's doing their best to reinvent how 3D scanning works. And they've even created an entire STEM website to go along with it. After some discussion, they sent me one of their three scanners and asked me to try it out. Digging into the case was a real treat. I've seen a lot of nice cases from musical instruments to technology, but this just may be the nicest one yet. Inside, you'll find everything you need from power adapters for different countries to calibration cards to a crazy awesome turntable. But the scanner itself, well, it's not as heavy or as big as I thought it should be. And why did I think all of that? Because in reading up on it, I found that it has an actual computer inside it with a 1.5 gigahertz quad core CPU and an integrated GPU, not to mention the four gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of internal storage. And all of that's dedicated to running just this scanner. And that means it's fast and able to be run without a massive computer hooked up to it. Just a web browser. Running the software to control the three scanner is pretty simple. Press the red power button. I wasn't entirely sure what to expect the first time I did this, but I was definitely not expecting to see a light come out of the front with words on the wall. It's actually a projector. After a few seconds to boot up, well, that projection screen tells you everything you need to connect. And they use a built-in mobile hotspot to get you going that first time, but then you can switch it over to your Wi-Fi or even connect it with Ethernet. The only caveat here is that the web browser you use, well, it has to be current and up to date. Oh, and screen size also matters. I did try out a smaller seven inch Fire tablet as well as my phone, but I was told that the screen was just too small. And that kind of makes sense. There's a lot of information on this screen. Well, logging in the first time will present you with some options. I highly recommend going through the demo that they provide as well as reading through all of those tutorials. And while it's pretty easy to get going, the more you know about those options you're going to have, well, it'll give you better results. I'm going to use a tried and true object for this test, my trusty chess king. I've used this in all the videos I'm scanning I've done in the past and some have turned out okay, but not all great. So I'm very curious to see what this scanner is going to do in comparison. Clicking Add Scan brings up a new window with two slightly different angles, and that's one from each camera's viewpoint. The three different menus at the bottom are going to be your greatest help to get great scans. The camera menu, the first menu there on the left, that controls the amount of light that goes into the sensors. Now this one takes some playing around, but it's easy to figure out. Just remember, if something turns red, stop, and then back up until the red goes away. Otherwise, that area isn't going to scan. Now the next menu, Capture, that's where you're going to set your density or basically the resolution of your scan. And this is also tied together with distance from the scanner to your object. So closer needs a higher density, farther away needs a lower density. The last menu is for controlling your turntable. And I found this actually to be one of the most important controls, at least when you use a turntable. 
automating the number of scans and how far around you want your object to rotate, well those are huge time savers as well as helping you get the perfect scan. But before any scan, calibration is an absolute must. Just like a 3D printer, if you're not calibrated, well, you're probably not gonna like the results. The instructions on screen are really clear and even explains those big red squares on your image, which are for focusing the camera sensors. Now, along with the demo and tutorials inside the 3 software, I did wanna mention I learned a lot by watching videos on Matter Informs YouTube channel. And there was one tip in particular that kind of stood out, and I think it's worth repeating for you here. And that tip is, start scanning with a lower density and less scans than you think. And I know, that just sounds wrong. Following this tip is going to save a lot of time, especially if your scan didn't come out right or you need to adjust some other parameters. There's no reason you can't add more scans later with a higher density setting if needed. And then later when you align, well, you can either delete that first one or just put them all together. Now for my chest piece being small and up close, I'm gonna go with a high scan density. Pressing the start scan button not only begins rotating the turntable, but it also kind of started a light show on my model. Those lights flickering in different grid patterns, well, that's what the scanner uses to create the 3D part of your image. If you're familiar with other scanners, you'll see there's no blue lights here like most of them have. That's because the 3 scanner uses what they call chroma spec technology, and that allows it to use the full spectrum of visible light and not just that standard blue. When it's all done, your project's gonna reload and you'll see a group automatically created with your scans loaded. Now those scans should already be aligned with each other and you can rotate your model using your mouse. At this point, if you want, you can always lay your object down to get a different perspective and start a new scan. You'll then get another group, but this group scan obviously isn't going to be aligned with the first group. Fixing that alignment brings in one of the most important and powerful features, I think, of this whole scanner software. When using the turntable, as I mentioned, a group is created for each batch of scans. Minimizing this to just that group name, well, that's going to make it a lot easier to work with. Since I scanned the chest piece standing up and on its side, I'm going to rename each group to help me remember which is which. Then, assuming your scans were well lit and they all came out good, auto-align is usually the best way to go. The first option you're gonna get, well, that's gonna set your base scan. That's the one you want to align everything else to. And since I closed up my groups, it's easy to set that first group as my base. And next, you're gonna be asked for the aligning scan, and that's gonna be the second scan group. The continue button starts the alignment. Well, now that everything's aligned and looking great, the only thing left is to merge all of those scans into one. And this is kind of like grouping objects in a 3D printing slicer. I do want all of them merged, so I'm gonna select all and merge, and after a few seconds, a whole new area is opened up for us. Here, we're gonna get to create the mesh for our scans. For smaller objects, just like setting density earlier, there are different quality settings. And also, just like density, you don't always have to use high quality depending on your model. My chest piece is small and I actually kinda wanna show all this off to you, so I'm gonna pick high quality. Once the mesh is done, step two is simplify and convert. We don't want a huge file, but we also want as much detail as possible. I did find that, at least on the current software version, if I just move that slider all the way to the right for the biggest size, it sort of automatically adjusts to about 50%. And with most of my scans, I've been pretty happy with how that looks. And then last, but obviously not least, is the texturizer. The 3 scanner has not one, but two 13 megapixel Sony cameras built in, allowing it to take high resolution pictures. And however they do it, those get mapped onto the mesh and, well, your plain single color scan magically turns into something you could use as a 3D asset in a game or video. All that's left here is to export as one of the many file types they have available. Then it's up to you on what to do with it. I'm 3D printing my chess piece so we can see how it all turns out, but there's still a few more things to look at before we get there. 
even with the turntable and proper lighting, there's going to be occasionally one side or another, for whatever reason, that's just not going to scan well. But the more likely scenario is going to be that your object's not going to completely fit in the screen at that 800 millimeter max distance they have. And at that point, it's time to disconnect the turntable and switch over to single shot scan. Other than automating the turntable, all the settings that we've already used, they work exactly the same. But now you're gonna need to manually move your object for each scan or manually move your scanner. The recommendation they give is to overlap your scans by at least 25% or more to make aligning easier. And I found the less detail you have on your model, well, the more you should probably overlap. Since there's no calibration, those focus squares, they become even more important. Then it's just a matter of moving your object into position, or if it's something like a car engine or a person, you can move the scanner itself, like I said. Just don't forget to stay within that maximum range of 800 millimeters, and be sure you have a large, sturdy tripod. Single shot scans tend to be all over the place, and they can also be different sizes depending on where you put your scanner, and that makes it hard for it to auto align. But Point Pick Align is here to fix all of that. Just like Auto Align, we need to pick our base and then our aligning scan, and we can only do one at a time. But this time, we're going to get two new screens. Base is on the left, aligning scan is on the right. The biggest problem I've had here is not having enough similar features that are the same on each image. So zooming and rotating, well, those are the keys to getting all of this right. And aligning here is as simple as dragging a number onto a feature on one image and then match that number on the other image. They do have a requirement for at least four points and you can do as many as eight points and that'll help you to ensure accuracy. Once you have all your points placed, a tip I have for you is to rotate both of the models and just make sure the numbers are still where you wanted them. I've placed numbers that look great only to find out later they're actually inside the model. Then all you have to do is hit the align button and if everything is right, you're going to see the results on the main screen. And don't worry if the scans aren't aligned quite right, fortunately you can do it all over again. Well, after aligning all the scans to the base scan, merging and meshing all works exactly the same as before. As I mentioned before, there's an entire completely separate site that focuses on using the three scanner in STEM learning in schools with suggestions for teachers and students. Well, the blog section even has details for creating and scanning. Well, that should help students to stay engaged and learn. To go along with that learning focus, they've also made an API available for free. What is an API? It's an application programming interface. Basically, they're giving away the ability to program your own software and use the three scanner in any software application that you can really imagine. You could feasibly create your own software to run it, create new vision or 3D scanning programs, you could even build it into a robot. Now I just need to learn how to program. I've had a great time learning the three scanner and the team at Matter and Form, they've been awesome at answering all of my questions. They also have a forum where users can get help from each other and the staff, as well as show off some scans and even request new features. But, what do I really think about the 3D Scanner 3 by Matter and Form? Well, I love it, and I'm kind of torn. I think it's an awesome scanner, and from what I've experienced, it's a pretty awesome company. The price is going to be one of the first obstacles for most people. This isn't your run-of-the-mill, off-the-shelf 3D scanner. This is a pro-level 3D scanner, and we all know what that means, money. My turntable scans, well, they turned out pretty awesome nearly every single time. I'm still having trouble with that single shot scanning, and here I do believe that a lot of that is really on me. So for turntable scans, there's no doubt. I believe this is hands down the best scanner I've ever used. Easy and incredible scans. You've seen a lot of those in this video. 
Well, what do you think? Would the price be worth it for easy, perfect scans? And what about the 3D prints, like my Chess King? This scan and the 3D print is hands down absolutely the most detailed I've ever gotten for it. Let us all know what you think in the comments. For me, I'm gonna keep working at it. It's another awesome tool for my 3D print lab. And I hope this helps you know more about 3D scanning as we continue to learn, 3D scan, create, and amaze.